All right, so we got Until Dawn Story Explained. Let's get right into the video. And welcome to another Story Explained What's up, man? video. In this one, we'll be exploring the story behind Supermassive Games' choice-based horror Until Dawn. Uh-oh. With many branching narratives, gruesome deaths, and an all-star cast, this game was a tense journey from start to finish. So let's dive in. Let's go. All right, we got the plot. I pretty much know everything about the game, but... Canada, Josh Washington and his twin sisters, Hannah and Beth Washington. Wait, this game takes place in Canada? I'm sorry for pausing. I don't usually pause it, but this, wait, this game takes place in Canada? I didn't know that. Really? They invite their seven friends, Sam, Mike, Emily, Matt, Jess, Ashley, and Chris to their family's lodge on Blackwood Mountain. One of the twin sisters, Hannah, is cruelly pranked by some of the group due to her crush on Mike, who is romantically involved with Emily. The only ones not involved in this prank are Josh and Chris, passed down in the kitchen, and Sam, who is Hannah's best friend, who is trying to find her to warn her of the prank. The humiliation of this prank leads to Hannah running into the woods upset, and her sister Beth running after her. Beth finds Hannah cold and crying, but they are forced to run when they realize they're being stalked. Uh oh. They run into a dead end, namely a cliff edge. Hannah slips whilst holding Beth's hand, and they are both hanging on. A mysterious man reaches out his hand, but Hannah and Beth fall to their deaths, presumably dying in the fall. Their bodies are never found. One year later, it's time Tough. for them to break again. And Josh invites all the friends up to the lodge again for the one year anniversary of Hannah and Beth's disappearance. A lot has changed. Mike and Emily broke up, and now he's dating Jess, and Emily is now dating Matt. That, that man, that man, Mike, is a dog man he had the best of both worlds right, let's go. drama the atmosphere between the friends seems cold and frosty pun intended and they all go off and seem to do their own thing due to an argument between jess and emily mike and jess are sent to the guest cabin by josh and matt and emily go to retrieve emily's lost bag sam takes a bath ashley and chris go to find a ouija board in the basement just as mike and jess are getting cozy in the guest cabin jess is brutally kidnapped Ooh, get over here Jeff, being dragged away with mike in hot pursuit Mike makes it to Jess, but she's badly wounded, and just as he's about to reach out for her, the elevator she is on... Get over here! ...presumably killing her. Spotting an unknown person, Mike follows them to an abandoned sanatorium. Meanwhile, having found their Ouija board, Ashley, Chris, and Josh attempt to use it, and seem to make contact with one of the twins. Tough. She's freaked out and runs off, but not before the spirit tells them to check the library for evidence. Chris and Ashley are attacked by a psycho who rigs them and Josh into a trap, leading to Josh being sawn in two. I couldn't believe it, I, bro. I couldn't believe it. At that point, I was like, "Brother, who is it? Like, bro, who's the, who's the guy in the mask? Like, why did he just like Floyd Mayweather us? Like, I'm sorry for pausing it, but like, bro, like, why did he do it? Like, I'm still stuck. Like, bro, bro, Josh, I thought this was a prank. Why are you like, bro? Why are you John joining us? Like, bro, why are you punching us? Are you good? Like, Ooh. Chris and Ashley escape and run into Matt and Emily. They are frantic and tell them there's a maniac about, and Matt and Emily climb a radio tower to radio for help. They manage to radio for help, and a ranger says they'll get a helicopter to them, but they have to wait until dawn for Tough. Rescue. Tough. As this happens, the radio tower is sabotaged by someone or something, and it Yeah, thing. The mind. Thing. Matt escapes, and Emily is able to get to safety, but they are now separated. Chris and Ashley are captured again by the psycho, and this time he forces Chris to make a decision to shoot Ashley or himself. However, the psycho has the gun loaded with blanks, and the psycho takes off the mask and reveals himself as Josh. This, this, this absolute, oh, I, I couldn't believe it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Which one did you guys choose, right? Um, did you guys choose to shoot um, Ashley or did you guys choose to shoot us? <laughs> I chose to shoot Ashley. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> hey, I chose to shoot Ashley. I'm sorry, y'all. My bad. Josh wanted his friends complicit in the disappearance of his sisters a year ago. To feel the same level of terror and humiliation that they did. I mean, they Mike did. Mike really confronts Josh, exclaiming that Jess is dead as a result of what he has done. And despite Josh's initial shock to this news, Mike knocks him out, and Mike and Chris tie Josh up in the shed so he cannot do any more damage. You know what? Back in the mines, Emily makes a gruesome discovery as she finds Beth's head and a cross with Beth's name on it, indicating a grave. She also Tough. discovers that Hannah survived the fall. Emily comes face to face with a stranger who is carrying a flamethrower despite running from him. He actually turns out to help Emily and gives her a bag with flares. Wait, Hannah survived, survived the fall? Wait, 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 wait. I thought she turned into like the little Wendigo thing. The lodge and tells the group what they're up against. Wendigos, which are spiritual creatures birthed out of cannibalism that only stop hunting at dawn. He tells them that they need to get somewhere safe, 
Telling the stranger that he left Josh in the shed, the stranger and Chris go to get Josh, but Josh is gone, and the stranger is decapitated by a Wendigo. Skidoos! Chris goes back to the lodge, and Sam, Emily, Ashley, Mike, and Chris head to the basement. Mike sets out to find Josh by going through the sanatorium, as Josh has the key to the cable car, which is needed so they can escape the mountain. On his way through, Mike encounters lots of Wendigos in cells. Sam goes after Mike and discovers him being attacked by a Wendigo and saves him, and as they leave, they shoot some barrels, destroying the sanatorium. Nice! Sam and Mike find Josh, who is in the mines. He's been uh -oh. dragged down there and is suffering hallucinations of his dead sisters. Uh oh. Mike slaps Josh to snap him out of it, and he hands over the key to the cable car. Sam separates from them, opting to climb to the surface, and Mike and Josh attempt to cross water. No. Nope. Mike is dragged under but survives, and Josh is grabbed. Yep. He spots his sister's tattoo. Get over here! And the go is revealed to be Hannah, who yep. drags Josh away. Remember Matt and Jess? Well, they're still alive. And after I mean, but like, why is she blaming, like, why is she blaming, like, Josh though like you should be really like I mean I understand like you know he was drunk or whatever and he could do nothing but like then day why are you dragging him away why didn't you make that effort to you know to, to get the people who pranked you I mean you sort of did but like you kind of failed at the end of the day you got your brother your brother had nothing to do with it I mean last time I checked I mean you you tried to do the whole like you know sne uh, sneaky link type of thing whatever and then you got pranked but like your brother was he was too drunk to even like know what was going on he was asleep I mean, I don't think it's fair that you, you know, drag him away and make him, you know, endure all that death and just and just misery rather than, you know, get the people who actually put you through those pranks. As a matter of fact, bro, they pranked you for like 5,000 views. It was crazy. For a short but tense escape, they make it out of the mines. All the remaining friends make it back to the lodge, but the Wendigos have overrun the lodge. The creatures fight each other and create a gas leak in the living room. Uh oh. After successfully evacuating all of their friends, Mike pops a light bulb. And Sam runs and turns the lights on, causing a spark. And but this is the good ending, ending though. This is started. the good ending. A helicopter picks them up and saves them. Afterwards, we learn that Josh has been dragged deeper into the mines again and is feasting on a body, yep. revealing to us that he is turning into a Wendigo. Yep. So that's the basic outline of the plot, but we do have a lot to go through here, so strap in. Let's start by looking at the Cree. The Cree are a real-life people from North America, primarily living in Canada, more specifically living in Ontario, Whoa. Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, with Whoa. the latter being the location of the game. They are split into subgroups based on the dialect they speak, with our particular Cree people speaking one of many different dialects of the Algonquian language, most likely to be the Woods Cree dialect. Known as a hunting tribe, their beliefs were one of animism, which means that the universe and all natural objects such as trees, plants, rivers, and animals all have souls. They believe the mountain will be cursed if it's ever harmed in any way. This is seen in game as if you disturb the balance of nature, it can come back and harm you. For example, if Chris chooses to shoot the squirrel at the shooting range, a bird will fly at Sam and cut her eye, which will start to bleed when she's being chased by the psycho, causing her position to be given away by a drop of blood. Their beliefs were that of a super- You know what? I don't even think, I mean, well, obviously that's what they believe and stuff like that. Well, to be honest with you, I just think that that's just called karma. You know, if if you do something, I mean, and I'm a, I'm a firm believer of this, whatever, like religion and stuff aside, I just think that if you, let's say, for instance, you know, shoot a squirrel or whatever, I think that like if you just straight up just shoot a squirrel or whatever, somehow, some way, no matter if it's a, no matter if it's 24 hours ago, no matter if it's uh, uh, 72 hours ago, no matter if it's a week ago, bro, I'm talking two months ago. Something is bad. Something's bad going to happen. It's going to happen back to you no matter what. So it, I feel like it, it's literally like a law. Like if, like if you do something, if you like shed like innocent blood, bro, or if you like not even shed innocent blood, I don't want to go too like too far, like down, down deep or whatever. But it's like what you give and then like you receive back to you. If that makes sense. I, I just feel like that's not even, like it's just religion aside from whatever religion you believe in. I feel like that's just like the like the karma that you get. So. If you put good into the world, you know, good's going to come back to you. But if you put bad into the world, bro, bro, be prepared because you're going to get the same amount of bad you put into the world. So that can mean on like an innocent thing, innocent animal, innocent person or whatever. Um, it will come back to you, you know, or if you do something to like, you know, to, to like somebody like, like, you know, that you loved or whatever. Let's say, let's say like that, that you like cheated or something. I'm just making up random scenarios, but I, you get what I'm saying. Like, you know, whatever you do, like whenever, uh, like whatever you do. Uh, always comes back to you, you know, uh, good, bad, whatever. So 
I just feel like that's like a universal like type of like law or whatever. I mean, so it's kind of like the same thing. Supernatural idea. Now, whether they actually believe that butterflies and totems would foretell fortune of prophecy is unclear, but I couldn't find anything about that in my research. One of the real beliefs of the Native American people is that a myth exists called the Wendigo. Wait, this so is a real thing? Back into the game. As mentioned, the Wendigo are a mythical belief held by the Native American people, including the Cree. Legend is that any human who commits an act of cannibalism leaves their body open to being possessed by the Wendigo spirit, and as a result, this person undergoes changes in their appearance and also physical changes. The Wendigo has an insatiable hunger which can never really be satisfied, so they have a need to feed. They are fast, agile, aggressive, and don't always kill their prey. They appear to mortally wound a human, immobilize Man, that thing built like Kevin Durant. The transformation to a Wendigo occurs within a short space of time, around several days to be exact. They are able to mimic their prey perfectly, as yeah. seen when Ashley or Chris go down to the mines, yep. and they think they hear Jess calling out yep, for they help. Can, they can they mimic the voices. Sight, if you don't move, they can't see you. There is an alpha Wendigo that exists called the Makapichu. The word Makapichu is the Native American meaning for he has large teeth. The Machu Picchu plays a very significant role in this story, which we'll discover later on. For Wendigo is killed. Wait, so who's the Maku? Who's the Ma uh, Maku Picchu in this game? Who is that? Because I know, obviously, uh, what's her name? Uh, 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 was it Hannah? I know Hannah was like a Wendigo, but I don't think she was like the. Uh, I don't think she was like the like. I don't think she was the head honcho. Who was like the head honcho of the Wendigos? Who? Killed. It's the host body is destroyed, but the spirit leaves the body and just dwells within the mountain, just waiting to possess its next cannibalistic victim. But how did the Wendigo come into existence on the Blackwood Mountain? The mine. In the late 1800s, a oh, man called snap. Jefferson Bragg opened up mines in Blackwood Mountain after the discovery of tin and radium inside the mountain. This was despite warnings from the Cree not to disturb the sacred mountain, and Bragg also operated the Blackwood Sanatorium. Essentially, Bragg drove the Cree off their land to build on it and then later established a hotel there, turning it into a resort. Over the years, the prospectors mined the resources of the mountain. Wait, which they what? Had great fortune. Now, due to the beliefs of the Cree that the mountain is sacred and that no natural thing on the mountain should be harmed, the spirit of the mountain is said to have cried out and the Wendigo spirits are said to have been away. I don't know this game had no, like that much lore. Like Ongoing, unmaintained structural concerns, at least until 1952. And a group of miners called the Blasting Crew became the victims of a cave-in when they tried to clear the tunnels using dynamite. We find 30 clock-in cards at the sanatorium, which tells us that 30 miners were trapped with no food. Oh, wait. So, wait. In the, um, I do remember. So, um, bro, where, which was it? I know in this game, there was like a room or whatever where there was like a... There was like a medical record of like a, of like a, of like a guy that used to work on like a mine or whatever. Wait, was that was that this game? I think that was this game. Wow, I didn't know, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I played like played the game the first time, I was not really paying attention to like the like to like the uh, papers and stuff that we picked up and like stuff like that. Uh, so that's kind of my fault. I'm gonna be honest. No with light. You. A rescue effort was conducted, and 12 miners were saved 23 days later. But why only 12? Well, as a result of severe starvation and madness, 18 of the miners were murdered by the 12 and were eaten. You can guess what happened next. Yep, they were all possessed by Wendigo spirits. They were taken to the nearby Blackwood Sanatorium, and when Mike visits the sanatorium years later, we find a few documents which give us a bit of insight. That's what I was talking about right here, y'all look. In the administration notes we find, we see that the sanatorium staff were told to make all beds available, so it's likely that existing patients were discharged early so that they could care for the miners. The doctors noted some incredible observations regarding the miners. They expected the men to be malnourished and emaciated, but they appeared healthy, and the miners informed doctors that they found an emergency. Bro, 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 their nutrition's off the charts. They're like, wait a minute, they, they, bro, they, bro, they came through to, to, uh, to save, like, the miners or whatever, bro. They came through, they was like, whoa, whoa, hold up, y'all, y'all look, y'all look full. Like, what, like, y'all look, y'all look well, y'all look well fed. What happened? Oh, yeah, bro, we're good. You know, we, we you know, we had, uh, extra food left over. <laughs> it's nothing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, wait, wait, so if you don't mind me uh, asking here, what's that red stuff on your, on, on, on you know, on the jaw? What's that stuff? Oh, that's nothing. It's just ketchup. Ketchup, huh? So what you eat with the ketchup? Oh, you know, I just had like some chicken, chicken nuggets, you know, chicken wings or whatever, you know, you know, freaks, bro. This is what, like this is what I'm saying, bro. There was <laughs> wait. So you mean to tell me there was thirty of them? 
and 12 of them killed like 18 how did bro wait how did 12 overpower 18 that's bro that's ridiculous i don't bro. food supply which of course we know is not correct at all a frame photo seems to suggest that everyone assumed that the 12 miners were the only miners trapped they yep. couldn't find the other 18 for that makes sense because it, whoever found them whatever if they would have saw that you know that there was all types of chicken bones and human bones and stuff like that on the floor they would automatically assume they, they first you know what i'm gonna be honest with you let's say for example right and i'm sorry that i'm pausing the video i'm sorry y'all usually i just let the video play out while i'm talking or whatever but like i don't know i'm, very, I'm really passionate about until down so let me talk let me yap out real quick let's say me and my crew came through and we saved like a bunch of people that were trapped in a cave right and we didn't know that there were 30 people now if we knew there were 30 people and we save and, and like, like we're saving people whatever and they're all coming out and we're counting the heads like you know like we're in school or whatever and we one two three ten eleven twelve and the heads stopped coming through and we're like wait a minute we're uh, we were, we're expecting 30 why is there 12 then we would kind of start scratching our chins you know we're like bro what like where's the other 18 i'm pretty sure like my math isn't I know I can count. Like I know I'm like I know I have like a wooden brain or whatever, but I'm pretty sure I can count. Like where's the where's the other eighteen? You know. Then I'll start asking questions. But if I didn't know that there were thirty or whatever, but I just knew that there were some people trapped, and me and my crew came through and we saved people, or whatever. Then we're thinking, oh, okay, cool. These are the people we like. We saved everybody. You know, hip hip hooray. So that's crazy. That's crazy to think that they didn't even know that there were thirty people in there. And they just saved, like, you know, they just saved uh, whoever they were there. Obviously, the tw these 12 menaces, they didn't, you know, tell them that there was actually 30 of them. So that's crazy. Obvious reasons. Outwardly, they seem fine. However, some had respiratory issues and they seem to be suffering mentally. Dr. Bowen states that these men, after examination, should technically be dead due to the levels of malnutrition. And despite these levels, a patient lifted 725 pound weights as a result. The testosterone is out of this world. Do you understand me, bro? The testosterone, bro, is, bro, the testosterone charts are pleading, bro. That man is Goku from Dragon Ball Z, bro. <laughs> that man, bro, he lifted 725 pound weights. Bro, who do you think you are, Brock Lesnar? What are we talking about? 725, bro, you thought you was John Cena, bro? Like, what, what's going on right here? So uh, they should have been, like, raised some alarms right there. What are they, what are we talking Observed usual growth and strength. So you telling me that that these that these medical doctors that went to school for twenty years, you telling me that that the, they that these people that were trapped in caves for like weeks came out stronger? What do you think they were doing? Push ups with no energy? How, how do you think? How do you? Huh? What are we talk like? Huh? Result. Bowen ordered that three staff be assigned to these patients rather than one. Nah, lock the these menaces up. Stating that the press are not to be allowed near the miners. Mike finds a broken camera, which could be a reporter's camera smashed on purpose. Uh oh. It seems like someone was trying to cover something up. This is why Mike finds 30 clocking cards stowed away in a safe, and Emily, while she's in the mines, finds the clocking in machine with the numbers of miners who clocked in rubbed off. This was the doing of Jefferson Bragg. As he was in charge of the mine and the sanatorium, he attempted to bury the entire truth of anything even happening. On the 24th of February, the miners, now Wendigos, attacked the staff, killing pretty much all of them. Jefferson Bragg locked himself away in a hidden room and took his own life. One of the most supporting pieces of evidence that dumb, the Wendigos in the sanatorium are the miners is seen through the case of a miner called Billy Bates. Billy was a married father of one who, as seen from a postcard found by Emily, was a bit of a naughty boy as he was having an affair with a lady called Loretta from Calgary. Oh, and you was cheating too. That's what you get, Billy. Anyway, Mike finds a case study you in the sanatorium which details Billy Bates' observation report. Among the symptoms displayed, the physician notes a scar. Mike recognizes this scar on the head of one of the Wendigos and deduces that these are the miners. Oh, that's Billy. But who put the Wendigos in the cages? Here's who. The stranger. Oh, wait. The stranger, named Jack him. Fiddler, is a man of Cree descent. A badass with a flamethrower. The game throws us off at first and insinuates that he is a bad guy who is seen pretty mysteriously up until the point in which he appears to help Emily by helping her escape yeah. when to go in the mine. His appearance is that. Wait, I had a question. Was he the stranger that tried to help out uh, Hannah and uh, her sister? Or no? Was he the guy that reached out his hand? To... I, think that was, I think that was him. I have a man in his 50s with a scar over his eye. Despite his age, he's able to carry around a flamethrower and traverse the mountains fairly well. I mean, well... He wears a dream catch around his neck, 
Native American artifact. Not oh, wow, I didn't even notice that. He was initially hunting something in the woods. He was hunting yeah. the Makapichu, the Wendigo Alpha. The Makapichu had seen Hannah and Beth, and the stranger had tried to stop the Makapichu from killing the girls. He warned it off after Hannah and Beth had fallen over the edge, reaching out to pull them up, but failed. That was him. I told you. Wow. That was him. That was him. That is crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. How much you want to bet that 90% of us, we all had the option, right? Here, here was the option. The options was to either, uh, it was either to let your sister go and like uh, grab the guy's hand or you just let go and just let you and your sister die. Wow. I bet 90% of us, uh, you know, just, just let go altogether. I can't lie to you. He turned around and the Makapichu was back. The stranger finally killing it and its spirit being released. But why was this man geared up to the nines ready for- Wait, I've never war? seen that. Well, due to this man's Cree ancestry, he was well aware of the myths regarding the Wendigo. He was well aware of the curse of the mountain. When he's in the lodge with the teenagers, he mentions that it's his mountain. While the teenagers oh, wow. naturally assume that he meant this literally, he only really meant this from a native perspective. He appears to live in the sanatorium and has tamed wolves for guard dogs, so to speak. He has set up dream catchers at different places in the mines. Due to his heritage, he believed that this would ward off evil spirits. So why was he hell-bent on destroying the Wendigo? I mean, they are a bad breed, that's for sure, but this seems personal, an obsession almost. During the game, after his very preventable yep. death, stupid yep. teenagers, his journal is discovered. This gives us plenty of information about the Wendigo, why they just won't die, and where they come from. It seems that the stranger's grandfather was also a hunter of the Wendigo, more specifically the Makapichu. To add a touch mm. of vengeance to it, we find out that the same Makapichu which caused the deaths of Hannah and Beth also killed the stranger's grandfather. This was personal. Oh, yeah, this okay. shows a newspaper clipping from that the makes sense. grandfather's death, reporting him as dying in mysterious circumstances. Is this signs of another cover-up? And this is where things get theoretical. Uh-oh. Jack Fiddler was given as the name of the stranger, but Jack Fiddler was actually a real-life Cree who himself hunted and killed 14 Wendigos. Born in 1820, it's stated that he and his son Joseph were arrested for murder after an eyewitness saw them kill a woman who was in the process of turning into a Wendigo. After being imprisoned along with his son, Jack died by suicide in 1707, aged 87. I'm not sure if the fact that the stranger is called Jack Fiddler is simply just a nod to the real-life Jack Fiddler, or they are intended for the stranger to be related. Well, it kind of has to be, right? I mean, if this whole Wendigo story is based off of off of a real thing. I, I didn't even know that the whole Wendigo and, and the Native American... I didn't even know this had anything to do with the Native American culture. I didn't even know that. So if, if like, bro, like, if, if, you know, if the stranger's name was based off of the real guy's name, then I mean that it, it has to be right. Like there's no, I don't think there's a third. I think that's just common sense, right? Or anyway, no? the stranger states that the Wendigo can only be killed with fire and that bullets will slow them down, but it won't actually kill them. As a result of using fire, the stranger managed to drive the Wendigo into cages. The cells we see in the sanatorium indicate that he was successful in this. He mentions that it's just better to lock them up, as that way they are trapped there and not killing them will keep the Wendigo spirit contained inside them. He made totems and copied the designs from the indigenous Native Americans and left them around the mountain, so that explains where they came from. Oh, he was okay. protective over the mountain due to his ancestors, and this was shown in his opposition to the Washingtons buying the property on the mountain. This effectively leads us onto our next part. The Washington the family, family. Bob Washington was a Hollywood movie mogul, which explains all the movie props in the basement. The family, as a result of Bob's career, were very wealthy. So in the 1990s, Bob purchased land on the mountain in order to turn an old ski lodge into a vacation home for the family. Okay. Bob also intended to build a chalet by destroying the old hotel. This was met with opposition from the stranger due to his connection with the mountain being sacred to his ancestors. At one point, Chris finds a letter from the mother of the family, Melinda Washington, which on the back states that there's a strange man hanging outside the generator shed. However, in this letter, Melinda expresses that she respects the land being sacred and offers to make a donation to the elder council of the tribe. The Washingtons used the lodge for annual winter getaways with the siblings inviting their friends over for parties. Until, of course, this culminated in the prank and the disappearance of Hannah and Beth Washington in 2014. So, so, they, so they basically, so that whole like that whole like um um like land or whatever, 
was basically shared land between like the Washingtons or whatever. Like, it, uh, yeah, the Washingtons. Then you had like the the, the Native American uh, heritage that that I mean that were there before the Washingtons or whatever. Um, and then you had the um, you remember uh, um, the guy's like resort, right? You had like his resort or whatever. Uh, you had like the ski lodge or whatever. So, bro, that whole land was like made of like different. It was made of like different, um, like different parts from like, it, like I thought it was all like connected or whatever. Turns out it's just like different parts of it, whatever. And then like obviously it's on the same land, so you have like the you have like the Native American uh, heritage. You have like you know uh, the stranger or whatever. He would come through and be like, yo, like who was this? coming through in the land or whatever and then the Washington would be like yo like who was that guy like bro we bought this lodge like get out of here I'm about, bro, I'm, about to, I'm about to write you I'm about to report you to corporate like what's going on so okay I get it who despite being best twin is technically the middle child as she was born first the reason for this prank as mentioned earlier was that Hannah had a huge crush on Mike obviously this obviously upset Emily who was dating Mike at the time and Emily's friend Jess who were the main architects of the prank as well as Mike himself Anna's crush on Mike was revealed to be more of an obsession. She has a picture of Mike on the board in her room, as well as numerous mentions of him in her diary. I wouldn't say obsession. I mean, I think that's just normal teenage love. I don't think that's like... Bro, she's writing him in a, in, in a journal. You know, she got his uh, picture, like, on the wall. I don't think that's obsession. I, I just think that's just, like... I mean, bro, we all did. I mean, I wouldn't say I had, like, the girl. I wouldn't say, like, I had, like my crush is like picture on my wall or whatever but like i definitely like you know uh like i've definitely like have i ever wrote about like my crush i don't think i've ever wrote about my crush or whatever but that, that's something that like i like like uh like a lot of girls would do they would like write about the guy that they like or whatever um some girls will like have the like have the guy's picture or whatever just in their phone and bro it's it's regular teenage i don't think it's an obsession i think obsession that's like but that's like you walk into the room and it's like 30 different angles of you. <laughs> like, it's crazy. So I don't think that's an obsession. She got a magazine compatibility test, which came out as result C, which meant that you're not compatible. Oh, that she should either let it go or do something crazy like get a tattoo. We find a business Tough. for a tattoo artist in a room, meaning that she's gone ahead with trying to get Mike to like her. So she got a butterfly tattoo. She is naive, as mentioned by Beth, when she finds the note from Mike on the side in the kitchen. After falling Mike, down, you dead wrong. Beth was killed, but Hannah suffered a broken leg. She waited four days and noted in her journal that she's extremely hungry. 25 days oh. later, Hannah succumbs to hunger and pain. And days after burying her sister, she digs up part of her body and eats it. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, man, it's, it's disgusting, man. But what do you expect, bro? Like, imagine, bro. Like, bro, first of all, you got a broken leg. You, there's no way that you can even try to climb up out of there, bro. I mean, bro, you, I mean, you could try to try your hardest or whatever, bro. But, like, it's been 25 days. I imagine, bro, I imagine that you're starving, bro. You, bro, you just want to eat rocks at that point. I'm not even trying to be funny, bro. But, like, imagine being, like, and I'm not saying that, you know, that you should eat people or whatever, man. But, like, what other choice do you have, bro? Like, you got to, like. Listen, man, you got to break some of the fingers off, bro, and cook them, but You got to do something, bro, because, like, what else do you have? Like, I can see if there was, like, an animal down there, then, all right, cool. I can eat, like, a rabbit or something, bro. There ain't nobody down there but sis. There ain't nobody down there but sis, bro. You got to you gotta start cooking the chicken like a stir-fry. What the amigos say? You got to you gotta, you gotta, uh, cook that thing up like stir-fry, bro. You got you to gotta make something happen. <laughs> Watch me rip up, it'll be real, be pay. Bro, you got you to gotta cook that thing up like stir-fry. What can you do? There, bro, there's nothing down there. There's no animals. There's no nothing, bro. What you got? What you going to do? Lick rocks? Like, what you got to do, bro? Get the cooking. You know what to do. It's at this moment that Hannah is possessed by the same Makapichu spirit, which was expelled by the stranger when he killed the old Makapichu. who is likely just hanging around waiting for Hannah to succumb to hunger. By the end of the journal, she is completely changed and is now the Makapichu. This is confirmed when Josh recognizes Hannah by the tattoo on the Makapichu. Oh, that's the Makapichu Michu? What's important to notice, however, is that Hannah has at least three possible opportunities to kill Mike, but doesn't. Firstly, she is watching Mike from afar. Secondly, she watches Mike through slats in a wall and lasts. Yo, I didn't even see that. Yo, Hannah, you're still... 
Yo, Hannah, I'm sorry. Maybe you are obsessed. Why are you so obsessed with me? Bro, you still watching the dude? Wait a minute. Boy, I want to know. Wait a minute. Born to notice, however, is that Hannah has at least three possible... Okay, now I remember this part where, where Mike was about to snipe. He was about to quickscope her. Secondly, she watches Mike... Why are you so obsessed with me? Boy, I want to know. She look, bro, she like, oh my God, it's Mike. It's Mike. I re Mike, I remember you. Look. Man, the eyes don't lie, Chico. Look at the eyes. Man, eyes wide open. Eyes wide open, bro. She ready to devour. She, bro, she about to lick the arms up and down. Mike, bro, listen. She about to lick you like a lollipop. Bro, is that... <laughs> she drags him under the water but doesn't kill him. She could have attacked him at any point but didn't. It's certainly possible that she still had some feelings left over for Mike. Of course she does. That may seem. Another plausible piece of evidence for this is that if a don't move sequence is failed in the lodge, Hannah attacks Mike, but throws him against a wall. She doesn't straight up kill him like she would with Sam. Her strength and size... Wait, that's to true. Yo, she still likes Mike. But like, here's one thing. Uh, okay. Here's one thing that I don't understand, though. Here's one thing that I don't understand, and maybe, okay, you know what? And maybe that just is true. I've heard, I've heard this one thing from something. I, I, I've heard this one thing from somebody. I'm not gonna say their name, but I've heard this one thing from somebody, and they said that when a woman really loves you, they will do anything for you, bro. Like, like it's crazy. They'll do anything. For, like that's when like a woman really loves you, whatever. And I don't want to, like, you know, be parasocial and be like, oh, so that means that, you know, that uh, Hannah, you know, really would do anything for Michael. No, what I'm saying is, bro, you have to understand this, bro. L listen, l sit back and listen to me. You have to understand that when she got pranked, bro, Mike was in on the prank. You do know that Mike was in on the prank, right? You do know that it was Mike, Jess, and Emily. Who set this YouTube video all up? This is a whole prank. Mike set you up. It's crazy because... You know what's so crazy? Because Sam wasn't even in on it. She would hurry up and kill Sam in a heartbeat. If Sam moves, it's done. She, bro, she would choke Sam up like these, bro. She, bro, she'll put Sam in, like, in a Kimura. She, bro, she would... Bro... I promise you, bro, if Sam moves even one, and bro, if Sam breathes the wrong way, if her breathing patterns change, Sam is dead. Bro, if, bro, if Michael moves, she'll just pick him up and throw him? Yo, yo, Hannah, how deep is your love? Bro, you really like this dude, bro. That, bro, I just noticed this. I, bro, I promise you. I just noticed this. This is ridiculous. Hannah was really riding for Mike. Even, bro, even whenever she turned into that gremlin, she still saved that. Bro, she pulled the man out of the water so she didn't kill him. Uh, if, bro, if Michael moved or whatever, she picked the guy up. She threw him. She didn't kill him, but she threw him. That's crazy. And guess what? Nobody, nobody noticed that. Nobody noticed that. That's crazy, bro. She still liked Mike. That is crazy. And then your own brother. You, look, you would do your own brother dirty. You would do your own brother dirty and, and, then, and save Mike? That's the thing that kills me. Mike was in on it. Mike pranked you. He knew what the precautions was. Mike pranked you. Your brother was drunk at the table. He didn't know what was going on. That's crazy. Wendigo does seem to indicate that she is the fiercest Wendigo of them all and is therefore the Makapichu. Hannah is shown fighting the other Wendigos in the sanatorium at the end of the game, whilst in the lodge, which potentially shows us that she's still got some of her old memory intact. It seems like she's protecting her friends, at the same time also trying to kill them. This is just a theory, but it's a strong one, considering that when Sam finally runs for the switch, yeah, she saves she the, yeah. to tackle the other Wendigo, preventing yeah. it from getting to Sam. So, I, okay, when she did that, I can't lie to you. I was like, all right, cool. She's, she clearly did that 
she clearly like you know saved her friends or whatever okay so that makes sense but at the end of the day though like here's what i'll say about this right because i don't think i don't think she killed no she didn't kill josh i don't think she killed josh i think she no she just dragged josh to like this place or whatever and then josh is basically like he was like deep in the woods that's when he he turned into like something okay she's killed in the subsequent explosion and the makapichu spirit released as we see at the end josh's transformation into a wendigo occurs after hannah has been killed yeah it's likely that josh will now become the makapichu yeah Oh, Josh. The Washington children. At first, the game does a pretty decent job of showing us that Josh just wants to be with his friends on the anniversary of his sister's disappearance. But obviously, that boy tricked us all. Case. Josh used to be close with his dad, but when Sam picks up the baseball bat in the basement, Josh mentions that he and his dad used to play all the time, but grew apart as his dad became too busy. This explains why Josh okay. is close to Hannah and Beth and why he took their death so hard. He is a complex character, but it's clear that human interaction is something that he treasures. Josh is revealed to be the psycho, as supported by a number of clues, such as the tape found by Sam. He has an extensive knowledge of movie effects and props. This is likely from the influence of his father, which explains how he came up with such elaborate games for his friends. That makes sense. That makes sense. It's revealed to us that Josh has some serious issues. From the age of 11, Josh was diagnosed with mental illness. But at some point, it seems that Josh had been misdiagnosed. He has and was prescribed medication for depression, yes, but oh. there was a potential second illness of schizophrenia which was never diagnosed. Due to him not receiving the correct medication, his condition worsened. He was referred to Dr. Hill on the 14th of March 2015. Wait a minute. Wait a whoa 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa whoa whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just got a eureka moment. So they said that he was diagnosed with depression. And he has a severe, uh, severe case of schizophrenia. So wait, does that mean that that guy that we would see like at the end of like every chapter or whatever. And he would like tell us, oh, so what do you think about this? Or what are you most scared of? That old guy, was he, wait, was he like ever real? Was he ever real? Like, was, or was he in like Josh's like? Oh wait, fourteen. A month after the disappearance of his sisters. Let me see. Let me see. He was flagged as a potential suicide risk and then discharged on the sixth of May, twenty fourteen. Wait. He was Alan extremely paranoid, as depicted in his sessions with Doctor Hill. The sessions with Doctor Hill gave us an important view into Josh's psyche. I knew it. The sessions seemed strained and very short, likely due to the game, but it did seem like Doctor Hill was just waiting for him for the session to end. He seemed very aggressive and hostile towards Josh and spoke disapprovingly of his actions. With Dr. Hill's office becoming more and more resemblant of his surroundings, these sessions were all in Josh's head. I knew, I, oh my God, uh, bro, I can't lie to you. I'm kind of smart. I don't give myself compliments like that. My, I don't give myself compliments or whatever. <laughs> but I'm kind of smart. Yo, how did I just guess that? I swear to you, I promise you, I didn't even know that. Bro, all my life, bro, all my life, bro, after like nine to ten years, I was like, bro, who is this guy? Like, bro, is he, was he like the family's doctor or whatever? Bro, I literally, I legit just now put the pieces together that, bro, Josh might, like, hearing he, hearing that he had like, a, like a severe, like, case of like, schizophrenia, bro, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, hold up, wait, maybe the guy that, like, after every chapter, whatever, maybe the guy that we see after every chapter, maybe he's, like, the killer, bro, or whatever. Like, it's crazy. Not the killer, but maybe he's, like, the, uh, maybe he's, like, not, um, like, maybe he's, just like, in our head or whatever. Because, like, I never see him throughout the story. It was crazy. That's how he viewed Now, this is largely in part down to how Josh viewed psychiatrists as a whole, being that he's seen so many over the course of a few years. In reality, Dr. Hill was probably nothing like Josh imagined him in his head. Sam finds Josh's phone, which shows that he has concern for Josh, as Josh has revealed his plan regarding his friends, and Dr. Hill asks... Oh, so Dr. Hill was real. Oh. Dr. Hill was real, but the sessions that we had, whatever, those were in his head. Gotcha. Let me read this real quick. Hi, Josh. Alan. Hope you don't mind me texting you, but this is really important. I got your email. I don't think that is your plan. I don't think that your plan is going to uh, help. Uh, I think 
come see me. Please pick up the phone. Uh, I'm getting worried. Oh, wow. So Dr. Hill in real life or sorry, not in real life, but Dr. Hill in the real life of like Josh was actually like a pretty cool doctor, whatever. But Dr. Hill in Josh's mind was like this, like he was like this psycho dude that would like ask you like he, he was like this psycho, scary, like mysterious guy that would only pop up at the end of chapters. OK, cool. If he's still. So lastly, we'll discuss the part of the story which people were a little confused by. Victor. At the very start of the game, we see a wanted poster with a man's name on it, Victor Milgram. Milgram is allegedly wanted for arson and death threats. Chris finds a newspaper clipping in the basement, explaining that Victor Milgram tried to burn down the old hotel after it was bought by Bob Washington, who fired Milgram. As well as this, Chris finds a photo of the twins with disturbing threats on the back. But the truth is, Victor wasn't even arrested. It was just a big backstory fabricated by Josh to support his psycho killer narrative for his prank. The newspaper clipping Chris found was from a stack of fake newspapers ordered by Josh. In reality, Victor Milgram was just a janitor who worked in the sanatorium in 1952. Yeah, 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 yo, Victor, <laughs> Victor, I want to say I'm sorry. This man, Josh, then slandered your entire name. He got everybody thinking that, you, that, that you're this menace. Yo, Josh, you know what? You, bro, you ain't nothing for that, bro. Bro, I, bro, I want you to write a three-page apology, bro, and send it to, to, to that janitor, bro. That man's a menace for that, bro. Early in the VR game, The Inpatient, Milgram helped a reporter gain access to the sanatorium as he believed there was some strange stuff going on in there. This reporter was likely the one who was attacked and mentioned in the newspaper article from 1952. Okay. The camera likely belonged to them, and another interesting point is that this reporter was actually hospitalized. When the protagonist wakes up in the hospital in The Impatient, he is suffering from amnesia and is being questioned by Jefferson Bragg, who, of course, was trying to keep the whole entire thing secret. Yeah. So this just all adds up. We know what happens Tough. next. The miners turn into Wendigos and yep. the protagonist resorted to cannibalism yep. and turned into the Machapichu, which, yep. in turn, years later, led the twins off the cliff and was killed by the stranger. Tough. But anyway, I hope this did a lot to explain or cover any confusion. Brother, you, you, did, you did good, bro. It was an awesome game and I really enjoyed my playthrough of it. And if you did enjoy this video, then please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below. Hey, Help man. this video travel through YouTube. But for now, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, man. Hey, man. Shout out to this guy, man. I've never uh, seen this guy's videos before ever. Uh, shout out to this guy, man. Hopefully you guys uh, go check this guy out, man. And, uh, bro, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel as well. <laughs> bro, you can subscribe to both of our channels. The, uh, the guy that we reacted to and my channel. <laughs> so listen. Um, bro, listen. We got that Until Dawn um is it is what is it like a remaster remake what what would you consider it i mean i think it's gonna be like a because a remaster is basically like the graphics just look like way better i think it's gonna be like until dawn they might just say until dawn remaster i don't think it's gonna be an until dawn remake if it was a remake then they would like change like some of like they would like change like some aspect of like the gameplay if it was a remake so i don't think it's gonna be i think it's like a remaster so we got the Until Dawn remaster slash remake, whatever you guys want to call it, in October. October 4th. Really excited for it, man. Other than that, comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? Uh, and again, man, I'm super excited for it. This game was like 9 to 10 years old. Uh, and I legit remember it. Bro, I remember this game coming out, bro. Oh, man. I used to watch my favorite YouTubers play the game like a thousand times. Then, bro, then I would play the game. It was super fun. Um, and I think I still have this game to this day, like on the PS4. It's crazy, man. So make sure you guys like, video, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new again, bro, we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So you guys have to visit that. And